It should be up and running. I'm not sure what I want to call this video. Uh, I just think it's important that uh, before you get to a calculus class that you consider a few things. Um, create some change. We're going to be looking at those a little more deeply than it's typical in an algebra one class. Uh, we're going to look at it through uh, interpretations, numeric, numeric and geometric interpretations and, or analyses. And I know I didn't really get to hear about concavity uh, in a numerical sense, in a mathematical sense, until I got to a calculus class. And I just think that's uh, that needs to change. I think that some of these topics can be looked at at a much earlier grade level. And uh, by starting those conversations earlier, uh, you have a chance to process them, uh, which I think is the chief roadblock, stumbling block to understanding math is not getting enough time to process things. So I want to put a few things, plant a few seeds, and we'll use uh, x squared and x cubed. Some of these things I've talked about in other videos, but I'd like to highlight issues around concavity, uh, and that'll be towards the end of the video. And I'll try to keep this short and sweet, but we should be familiar at this stage in our class, we'll be familiar with y equals x squared, uh, two gets you four. And in calculus, you might consider that a position function, just a y equals function. Right? And y prime is often the simplest notation designated for rate calculations. And y double prime is all about acceleration. And so we have position, velocity, acceleration. That, that comes your way pretty early in a calculus class. And I think it's worth diving into where these rate calculations come from. Um, and if you're looking at the squaring process, it stands to reason you should draw a square. And if you want to look at rate, well, rate is basically you know, algebra one, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But if we want to look at the rate at this instant, what's happening? And we got to zoom in there. To zoom in there, we want a small change in x. And so I decided to just do 2.01. You get more accuracy, obviously, if you do 2.01. And it doesn't change the stem much. Um, I think that the drawing, you know, here's an increasing dimension of 0.001 from 2. That made it a little bit bigger on the right and a little bit bigger on the upper left. And so that's going to give me a new area. And that new area is that. However, I'm reducing it. I'm just approximating it to be 4.00. And so how much did my dimensions change from 2 to 2.01? 0.01. So let's put that here, 0.001. And that's being divided basically into 0.00. So what I've really done is added a layer. That layer made the area a little bit bigger. And there's a little error in that calculation. And it's over here on the cusp on that corner. But we can push that error so far out to the right that, you know, here's your basic change, 0.004 divided by 0.001. And that is a uh, four to one rate of change. So if we were to draw a tangent here, the tangent would be going up at four to one. And that's the drawing that goes with it. And we can change that to a three by three. Three by three gets us nine, nine units of area. And if we look at that, and I can add another decimal place to kind of talk about what I was talking about earlier. Three gets you nine and three point, I'll add one more decimal place. That's going to get us 9.0006001. And now I've got a, you know, a little more accuracy. 0.006 divided by 0.001 is actually 6 to 1. So I'd be going up a little faster, 6 to 1. And it turns out if I did a, a at 1, I'd be going up at 2 to 1. And at 0, well, you can see it's pretty flat there. I'm not changing at all. Zero, two, four, six. Hmm. Sure looks like it's uh, got something to do with two X's. 
Yeah. yeah. So if this was uh, five, then I got a feeling I'm going up at 10 to one. If this was six, I think I'm going up at 12 to one, so on and so forth. And we could play with negative numbers, and see how it's coming down. I won't do that right now. You can do that on your own if you want. So at uh, negative three, uh, I don't know why I wrote that. Negative three, we still get nine units of area, but we're actually coming down at six to one. Okay. We're going to talk about the concavity of this shape, which has a concave up shape, concave up shape in a moment. Okay, but let's actually turn our attention to the cubic. And let's look at the geometry of a cubic, which is harder to draw. It's harder to draw these things. Okay, but there's, you know, if, if you in, go and make that dimension a little bigger and that one a little bit bigger and that one a little bit bigger, you know, length, width, height equals volume. If you made each go up by 0.01, oh, uh, so this should have been 2.001. Oh, oh, there's the numbers. And it looks like we're going up at, and this is still error. There's going to be some error built in. And with a computer-generated um, picture, I think you probably could show where the error is. Uh, it'd be hard for me to show it to you now without you panicking and going, what's he talking about? Okay. But the basic change is 12 to 1. Three decimal places, three decimal places. Change in X, 0.01. Change in Y, 0.012. Because I can push those error way out to the right by adding zeros and we're just going to still get this 12 to 1 ratio. So on the cubic at 3 we have a volume of 27 but it's going up to 12 to 1. Oh, I meant to do 2, didn't I? I can't seem to get through a, a video without thinking about the next step. So at 2 I'm going up to 12 to 1. Let's put the 12 to 1 here. Well, it turns out at 3, I get 27, right? Then let's look at what happens when I'm at 3. So 3-dimensional, three, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And why don't we go one more decimal place? 3.0001 is going to get me 27. Oh, oh, make sure I don't make a mistake. 27, oh, oh, nine, oh, nine, oh, oh, one. Okay, I hope I got that right. I think I do. Uh, hope I said six out of two. Hope I have a six there. Anyway, the basic change is 27 to one. And if we did this with more points, uh, we could certainly do it with the negative. So at negative three, we get negative 27, and I'd still be going up to 27 to 1. This one's always increasing, except at zero. All right? And the reason behind that is still geometric. So let's look at squaring flat, right? Squaring is flat. Why is it flat? Why is there no change at the vertex? Because there's no square. It's pretty hard to draw a length and a width when there isn't a square there to draw, okay? The bigger the square, the bigger the change in area. And we're, we're thinking about increasing our dimension just by 0 0.01, standardize, standardize. Little change in X, just standardize, planting a seed here. All right, and at the cubic, if we don't have a cube, if you don't have a cube, right, you've got a cubic graph that looks like this. And again, it's flat. At x equals zero. Why? There's no cube there. And how do you, oh, I didn't bring my manipulator, but how do you increase the volume of a box? Let's say it's a solid by painting one side, painting the other, and painting the top. And now that box is just a little bigger solid. All right? And so why does that increase volume? Because the paint has a little bit of height to it. It's, you know, it's got square area, square area, square area, perfect cubes, right? And I think we can see that. So if this is a, uh, uh, let's go over here to a two by two by two, because we did that one. Well, two times two is four, right? Another two times two is another four. 
to the top is four. Well, that's three squares. Three squares with a little bit of height. That little bit of height would be 0.001, for instance. And that's kicking in a little more volume. And let's go back to some of those numbers in the table. Just trying to plant some seeds here. Let your brain start processing this stuff. So here's the cubic. Well, what do you get when you do, you square this and multiply it times three? I think you get 27. What do you do when you square two? You get four times three. I think you get 12. What do you do when you square negative three? You get nine, nine times negative three, uh, positive three, sorry, 27. So that way you can actually start to think about how things are changing with a microscope. Now let's talk about concavity. Let's just talk about concavity. So we have, these are the rates at nine. Remember the square, how does the square get area by two side lengths? Right? You just add a little bit of area. And of course there's a, dimension change here, and that's what we're calling 0.001, but it's, you know, that, the original X and that X, and that's 0.001, right? So the bigger the square, the bigger the rate of change, but it comes from doubling the X value. If we double that X value, we get negative six, we get negative four. So that means I'm going down at six to one, I'm going down at four to one, I'm going down at two to one, I'm flat, I'm going up at two to one, going up to four to one, I think you can begin to see the trajectory, all right? And that's what we call a concave up shape because the next rate is always two more than the previous one, okay? So therefore we're going, got some acceleration here, acceleration. Whereas with the cubic, what are the rates doing? Well, they're always going up for one thing. How much did they go up here? On average, what is that, 19 units? So I'm going up at 19 to one, and then from negative eight to negative one, I'm going up at seven to one on average, and from negative one to zero, I'm going up at one to one, and at zero, I'm actually zero, I'm not going up at all. And then from zero to one, I'm going up at three X squared, right? Uh, but I'm doing average rate of change, so I'm going up one. What's the average rate of change from one to eight, seven units. You've got some symmetry here, right? And then you're going up 19 to one, and I hope you can get a feel for the, a little deeper feel for the cubic. Now, there's a big difference here because from 19 to seven to one, that's different than one to seven to 19. This over here is a brain. That's acceleration. That's acceleration. We call that concave up, right? Whereas over here, I'm going up, right? But less quickly. We call that concave down. And when you start applying calculus to physics, you're going to start with you know, some basic physical situations. Position, where something is at. How is it changing at that instant? What's the rate of change at that instant? And what's the acceleration? You know, is it going to be going faster a, a moment later or slower? Okay, so those are just some things that I think you want your brain to start processing now. Right? You want to start seeing those things now, not when you get to calculus. There's too many memorizations. There's a lot going on. And if you have a little understanding, just a little, it's going to help. You want to strengthen that understanding, then go to the video, and I think you can look at it before you get to calculus. The relationship between differentiation and integration it comes from the drawings I just started. Okay, hope that helps somebody. And feel free to comment.